began a piece for the great guitarist John Williams, a piece for guitar and orchestra. That's what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, it's going to be premiered, this guitar concerto, in Darwin at the International Guitar Festival. It's the first time I've ever attempted to write for guitar. I've got a pretty clear picture of what it's going to be like. Yes, it's, it's filled with light and sunlight and water, and um, it has something of Darwin in it. I couldn't be too specific, but uh, I, I certainly wanted it to have, and in my mind I associate with it. Uh, there's certainly this um, picture that I have on the, the piano always, which is a Northern Territory uh, Mallee flower, um, which I, I think in some ways, I'm trying to get that feeling of, of ecstasy uh, into, the, into the work. beginning uh, to write a piece for the first time, my wife tells me I get very edgy. I can't see it myself, but it's probably true. Um, and I, I get very vague. Uh, and I sort of wander around. And the piece starts as a, a feeling of a shape in, inside me, and I know that it will grow into... It, it's an empty space, I suppose. Um, it just doesn't have any particular shape, but it's there. It's a, it's a space that needs to be filled. In the early 70s, I went to Europe to continue studying composition. basement in Notting Hill and I was composing compulsively for 12 hour stretches and I, I um, used to have to take pills to make me sleep because I was so hyped up from that activity. I clearly remember the moment when I started to question this course of self-destruction. I'd been working on this piece, which now just seemed like a, a hollow exercise in futility. I came to the conclusion that what, what my music was suffering from was claustrophobia. I needed a peace and quiet to get work done. In order to find that, I moved to a remote Yorkshire farmhouse. And most unfortunately, however, this seemed to have a, a paralyzing effect. The landscape was so bleak. My mother had recently died and I'd come back to Australia because of that. I was in a very strange, trance-like state of mind, and I didn't know quite what I was doing musically. I wanted to find another language, something that was um, relevant to me, rather than to uh, what was perhaps expected of me at the time. Generally, the syntax of my musical language was very ossified, I suppose, and it seemed to need a bomb under it. It just, something had to go uh, in order to let light in, 
and to let silence in. I just wanted to use the title of a Chinese brush painting um, because that whole philosophy of Chinese calligraphy was what I was about, trying to get at something absolutely essential with the utmost economy of means. It somehow had to be related to my own environment and particularly the Australian bush. One day, my family and I visited um, uh, my wife's sister and brother-in-law, who settled in Pearl Beach. And um, their house happened to be for sale. And quite spontaneously, I, I said, you know, let's buy it. And Helen, my wife, was a bit taken aback, but she said, OK, you know, we did. Um, it was a madly impractical thing to do, because I was working in the middle of the city, at, teaching at the conservatorium. Immediately, this feeling of tranquility took over and it pervaded all of my work. It's exactly what I needed. Every day uh, in Pearl Beach, I would walk up the fire trail, which to me was the most important part of the day. I developed a, a sort of quite a fascination for insect sounds, particularly because it, they seem to be so mysterious, so part of another world, and yet they seem to be impinging on our world. I used to go around at night listening to them in drain pipes where they were amplified. And I suppose I became quite eccentric. Somehow I brought all this information back and it got into my music. And I found myself having to actually stop occasionally and think, Right, you know, this is too predictable. It's too, too predictably insect-like. And then I would have to um, stop and rethink, or perhaps stop thinking altogether. One day in Pearl Beach, I was sitting by myself in a dry creek bed. I remember there was a, a sort of green light from the cabbage tree palms, little bird calls. And, of course, insect life. I became extremely aware of myself in relation to the operation of, of nature. And I suddenly had a, a sort of a flash of awareness that this was um, the ideal state of mind. As human beings, we're uh, not here to um, dominate nature, to reject it, accept it, um, sentimentalize over it. We're just part of it. This state of mind, um, which I tried to get into a piece I was writing at the time called The Tower of Remoteness. This state of awareness is summed up in a Japanese poem. The wild geese 
do not intend to cast their reflection, the water has no mind to receive it. Writing music almost became an act of contemplation. I wasn't designing it so much for concert halls, for lots of listeners. I, I assumed that a few people would be interested, but it was a very introverted process. I mean, I had to go right inside myself. Then I had to come out again and sort of look at the world. Then I had to bring it back into, into uh, my own interior world. And it became, uh, well, these pieces became known as my sacred pieces, so-called. I'm always a bit embarrassed by that word, but still. Um, then having done that for a while, all this sort of navel-gazing, I suddenly had an explosion of, not revulsion against it, but I just wanted uh, to bring the body into the, the act, as it were, and to um, uh, sort of looking for perhaps a wholeness that I had, um, uh, that had atrophied during this, this period of, of uh, the sacred pieces very quiet, uh, static pieces that I'd been writing. And um, suddenly, uh, instead of bringing in a bit of, uh, uh, a bit of a tune or a dance rhythm or something, the whole thing started to dance like mad. Critics, and insofar as we should take notice of them, were somewhat dismayed. It was considered far too uh, accessible to be um, taken seriously. Uh, I mean, it's an absurd attitude. It sounds ridiculous today, and I think even some of the proponents of it at the time would probably agree. When you consider, uh, if too many people like your music, it can't be any good, um, it doesn't necessarily follow, does it? rather than a, uh, an interior one. It's, a, it's the extrovert side of me. There is one, apparently. I had perhaps realised that before. We need a 
need a tennis court. Oh. Sorry, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Look like that. Oh, wow. Being a composer is a pretty full-time occupation. Um, it really doesn't stop. I mean, you don't knock off at five or anything like that. I compose at home. I spend most of my time working here. I, I can't do these backhands. My wife teaches piano here uh, in this house, so of course we have to work it so that we're not audible to each other. Um, the children are here, of course, a lot of the time. Um, it's not easy to coexist in that way uh, because there seems to be no time when we all just stop work and, and start to live. Oh, oh. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. When I was a, a tutor at Sydney University uh, in 1973, I had a knock on my door one day and in walked a young lady with pink hair, braces on her teeth, who said that she would like to learn composition from me. Well, we seem to get on quite well and, and uh, not much, uh, well, a decent interval afterwards we were married. Very true. Will you write it? Come on, let's try this. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, one. I was a first-year student at Sydney University doing music and I wanted to do some composition and I knocked on Ross's door opened it and uh, there was this lovely man sitting there looking terribly pale and vague and he'd just come back from Yorkshire and obviously had a very strong accent. He'd been living there for quite some time and he had his feet up on the table looking very laid back and he was raving on about John Cage, the American composer John Cage, and Zen Buddhism, and John Cage lying on a stone slab and conceiving music and talking about magic mushrooms. I mean, this is the early 70s. And, um, and I just thought he was the most gorgeous, exotic, unusual creature. And um, I was all of just 18, fresh from school and the suburbs. And um, we clicked. Do you want that red? No, oh, I've written red. I suppose I do. What did I write in 1977? I figured. How come we haven't played it until now? Ah. <laughs> She's enormous help to me when I'm composing because, I mean, the fact that she's here a lot of the time, uh, if I get stuck with something, I'll call her in and play it over. And, well, she does get irritated sometimes and I don't blame her, but she t can be very helpful because I can just say, I'm so close to this, you know, I don't know whether it's working or not. And she'll say, it's a load of rubbish or it's wonderful or whatever. And that, I can't tell you how important that is. It's, it really, really helps tremendously. Do you want to just try that again? Uh, um, da 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 Would that be easier? Uh, probably not, no. Okay. Well, Jeremy is interested in all sorts of things. We don't know where he's going to end up. He's uh, learnt various instruments. He's at the moment learning the trumpet and doing pretty well. He's interested in all kinds of music, which is rather nice. Um, I'll go into his room and he'll be sort of listening to pygmy music or jazz or 
uh, you name it. I mean, he's just got a very inquiring mind musically. It's very different to the violin. <laughs> yeah. I remember playing it on the violin when well, we were about... He's not actually. like me. I was 13 and I knew exactly what I wanted. When I was very young, uh, I, I had to be dragged away from the piano. Um, and uh, I remember making things up and, and my family didn't realise that I had made them up. Um, and I was a bit miffed, but uh, got over it. And uh, so I, I was always intensely interested in, in music, but somehow other things got in the way for some years and I only came back to it very, very seriously when I was 13, having um, uh, sort of not kept practising or you know, just let it go. I actually wanted to be a, uh, a visual artist for many years and then suddenly I, I, you know, this, I was confronted by this urgent need to be a composer and um, it was pretty frightening. My family quite rightly discouraged it because they thought I'd never make a, a living. It was quite the right thing to do, I suppose. But when they saw I was absolutely serious, uh, they were very understanding about it and very supportive in the end. Well, I was probably dead worried too. <laughs> I'm surprised you can play it all with nails that long. Hmm. They, sh they really should be yeah, cut. Yeah, all right. Do you want to have a go at it? Okay. Hmm. Hang on, hang on. You've got to bring out the contrast here, haven't you? Forte. Emily, like Jeremy, is extremely musical, uh, but her preference seems to be for drama. Just, just try the first bit. Okay. Oh, shit. She does play the piano, um, but she's never really learnt it. No, 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 no. Too late. You've got to okay. be careful of those. You're getting the notes right, but you've got to... Um, the whole point of it is the contrast between the loud and the... the I wrote a, a series of piano pieces for Emily. Um, she can play them without really having worked at them much, and I, I, I just wish she'd get on and do some practice, because she's an absolute natural. Both cases, both children, they've reacted uh, against Helen and me because here we are sort of so obviously busy all the time and we don't seem to relax enough, I have to say. And I think they probably want to choose occupations which don't seem to be, to them, to be so time consuming. And I mean, they see me tearing my hair out and walking up and down in, in a day, sort of trying to get something right. And it doesn't. So uh, it doesn't really stimulate them to want to follow in my footsteps, I think. I got a, a phone call from John Williams the other day and, I mean, a progress report on what he thought of the, the, the um, guitar part and everything was fine until he became very hesitant and said, there is one, one thing and I, um, you know, he said, I, I hesitate to mention this, but I wonder if you'd consider uh, rewriting some bars. And I said, oh, is there a technical problem? And he said, no, it's, it's just that it's so like flamenco and I find it very corny. And he said, you may not, you're not part of that tradition, but for me it's, it's just too close to the, the real thing. So I said, fine, you know, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. And, and uh, I had a go at it and I wasn't very convinced at my rewrite, but I got a fax after that of uh, several possibilities from John. I think it was number four, was absolutely superb. It actually is much better than the original, I mean, flamenco or not. I 
think musically rather than verbally um, so much of the time. You know, obviously my head is just filled with music and so my thoughts tend to be largely musical. It's only fairly recently that I've been able to sort of switch off the music and read a book. I mean, I, I've always read books, I love reading books, but I find it difficult uh, to sort of stop the music coming. for voice until my friends uh, Hartley Newman and Nicholas Routley persuaded me to start writing some stuff for them. Uh, and they actually found me a text, some poems by Michael Dransfield, a young Australian poet who died tragically at the age of 24. Um, they thought that these texts would be ideal for me, as indeed they were, because they were about nature. Um, so, with great difficulty, I wrote this song cycle. I hadn't written songs before. It is a possibility. Now rain clears the air and falls and falls and will be I found that I didn't want to write vocal music with texts that were sort of literally, literary based. Uh, I wanted to create my own texts in some way. So I started uh, actually making them up. And I just created these nonsense syllables that meant nothing. Well, I, I'm not sure how I would describe what it's about. It, it, it just is. It's a, it's a, an impulse. I was commissioned to write a, a an orchestra piece for the ABC in. Uh, about 1991, that's when I started it. It was for George Mester and the West Australian Symphony. But events uh, somehow caused me to, to make that piece, particularly for the conductor Stuart Challender. The fact that he had AIDS had reached me. And, uh, well, this was a, 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 an enormous tragedy because he was such a wonderful man and um, you know, he was dedicated to Australian music, Australian composers, and uh, somehow the, the piece had to be a memorial to him in some way. It's a ritualistic piece, after all. It's not just a, a subjective uh, response with sort of emotion going all over the place. It's, it's, a, it's a contained response to something. Javanese um, highly decorated fishing boat uh, and many others in the museum, I think account for some of the Indonesian scales that got into the piece. So there, there, is a, uh, uh, there are many different influences from different sources and I couldn't really pinpoint them, but this is certainly a focus for me. Don't expect anything. <laughs> 
a nice thing to say to yeah. composer, isn't it? You know, hadn't heard the bit. Absolutely. Yes. This has been practiced the other side of the world. You come and say, don't expect anything. I've heard it over the phone. It sounds great. We could talk through first, actually, um, and probably this one is the most critical one at 100. Uh, mm. It's very awkward to finger, is that why he was... I think yes. that's what he was saying. It yes. is yeah. very awkward to finger. Yeah. And I've been going on and on over and over again, trying to drill it in. Yes. I mean, I worked out a finger. Yeah. I think it's OK. Yeah. That's very good. I know I played the wrong pitch harmonic. Yeah, This is the master. It's a sweet thing, and I go straight into two. <laughs> this should be right. Yeah. I've done that. I must have done that three thousand times in the last three weeks. I've, I've actually, I've actually, I promise you, I've done it. Like that. It's the only way of getting it. So, because you see, they're all across. We don't normally finger across, mm. we usually try and change, mm. but it just, mm. yeah, they're only habits. Mm. Habits are to be mm. broken, aren't they? Oh, dear, <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely, so. yes. But it sounds so good. Mm. I mean, yeah. the, the writing, Ross, is lovely yeah. when you do that yeah. sort of thing, really. Yeah. I know it's, it's the sort of thing, um, I think, if you, if, I can say if you knew more, it sounds terrible, but what <laughs> I mean, true. no, if you were more, mm. if you were like trying to write guitaristically, you wouldn't have done it, yeah. you have done uh, it. and that's the problem. Mm. Well, that, that was your attitude from the beginning, not yeah. to have me to inform. Exactly, I did mm. say that. I said, no, you well, know, when you write. I could feel it, but and, it makes but sense. That's a typical example, yes. you know, someone yeah. might say, oh, no, I won't risk yeah. that, I'll yeah. do. Yeah. But actually, yeah. and then you'd never get it, you know. Yeah. It's and a it's, great effect, isn't and it? And if I get it, it'll be a great effect, it'll be entertaining at least. How would you like Ross the entry here? Because it's Tutti again. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually a bit clumsy to play. Yeah, I've, didn't we get rid of that? Because the um, the cellos have got it anyway. Yes. Right? If the cello, that yes. they're on open yeah. strings, yes. that, that'll be. I could yes. to make a nice good thing. It will. I would just. It, it would normally be timed, okay, yeah. mm. if you wanted the whole lot to strum it. <laughs> We'll um, attempt to go right through stop start. We're obviously going to run a little late tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's fine, that's fine. Yep. Are you happy with tempo or do you want to go a little faster? That's a bit slow. A bit slow? It really Here is slow. Yeah. Quite a... Uh... because yeah, I've been practicing a guitar part and even though I've read through the orchestra part on the piano to get an idea of it until you hear the textures and then you can contrast it, you know, get the contrast of how they get the, the two sounds, the guitar and the strings. So it was lovely, it was very exciting, you know, even though it, in a way it's got a quite chaotic, you know, the first run through especially is very, 
often very chaotic, but you know that it's going to be worked on and it's, you rapidly sort out one or two difficult place, places and the rest sort of plays itself. And, and Martin, one yes. other thing. Uh, just trying to show, yes, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, at uh, bar 10, the viol, uh, the, sorry, the second violin, yes. that G yes. should come through. If that yes. could have an accent on yes. the first beat. Second violin, bar 10, put an accent, please. Okay. Sorry? Where would you like the second beat playing? Second what? The top D. Well, then I think if you're going to be playing two open strings, you're going to have to play that D in first position. Yes, you're going to have to. Huh? That's, a, that's an open string. It's just a second string. It's not, you're not intending that that's just to be on. That's right. It's quite soft. Are we in the, in the same place? Yeah. It's the. The very, f okay, the very yeah. first note of the piece, yes. the up piece. Which is the cello? We've got which an is, open D. Is that that's right, open D. Yes. If you could also yeah, play the open D and the open A above, so that you're... All you're oh, right, so you want to oh, sound double stop. Yeah. Let's try that. Uh, what I want to do is reinforce that, because yeah. it's just not coming through. You get da 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 But it's ba da ba ba mm, ba 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 and the mm isn't coming out. Right. You see oh, what so, I mean? so you want them to play the A with the... With the if that would yeah. help, uh, or yeah. alternatively, we might be able to sort of... I'm using up all the time we've got, I know, but just... Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you could well, really, try it. really try so, that, So if you can go through it, this... Yeah. You've got a mute on thing. Let's try it. Okay? Here we go. Let's go. Thank you. Let's just try it. Let's try it. One, two, three. A couple of things. I managed to change one thing on the spot. Uh, I managed to sort of reinforce a chord that wasn't coming through. And I made a sort of spontaneous decision and it worked. But the danger is that using the very limited time we've got, if I make a bad decision, we're going to waste time. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, Ross Edwards. Right, so, all right. Are you a happy man? Oh, yes, oh. yes. <laughs> that's the question. Are you happy? Sure. Tempo, details, last movement? So, oh, yep, yeah, that's that's Obviously, there's um, I think we, some details we have to sort out with the performers, but they're doing a remarkable right. job. And especially, this is an, an amateur orchestra who just, because they love it, and uh, they've, they've worked so hard and they've come up with a um, you know, it's going to be a fantastic performance. We now please welcome tonight's soloist, internationally the acclaimed guitarist John Williams, who brought the world premiere of the concerto for the Paris School by Russell Williams.
this country in Litchfield Park is the sort of place I'd like to spend about three weeks of doing very little except observing and listening. To come to a, 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 a climate like this, a hot climate, and just slow right down, I think would be the ideal thing for me. Might actually. I can imagine my music changing as a result of uh, being in a place like this. Perhaps changing for the better because it's always hyperactive, either that or it's got this forced stillness about it. Um, which uh, these two extremes seem to operate in, in my work. Here, maybe I would find the balance. <laughs> 